At any given point during the year, there are tons of crypto hackathons going on. These crypto hackathons are a great way to dive into Web3, learn a lot, and meet like-minded people. But that's not why you clicked on this video. If you're gonna put the time and effort into doing a hackathon, you want to be competitive. You want to make some money. You want to win. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm not just making stuff up. I've entered three Ethereum hackathons in the past and won prizes in every single one of them, including a first place $10,000 prize at the recent Arbitrum hackathon. So by the end of this video, you're going to learn what it takes to take home first place in a hackathon, including the specific things that my team did in order to win. If you think that you need to be a super coder to have a chance at winning, Get that idea out of your head right now. Winning first place is a lot more about your ability to execute during a hackathon than your coding ability overall. And as you'll see, coding ability may not even be the most important skill. So when you're approaching a goal, sometimes it's helpful to start at the end and work backwards. What is our goal? To win the hackathon. What decides whether or not we win the hackathon? The judges. At what point do the judges make their decision on whether or not we should win? That is the final hackathon presentation. In reality, that presentation is the only thing that matters. Yes, your idea is important and your code is important, but only as far as it contributes to your final presentation. That final presentation is a showcase of your idea and the work you put into it as well as the story that you're telling about the impact that your idea could have. I even believe that if you don't have a good presentation, you will not win the hackathon. The presentation is the lens through which the judges will view your entire project. If that lens is scratched, dirty, or foggy, then they won't be able to see all the effort that you put in. And they might not even understand the idea or the project that you're trying to build. So we've established that the presentation is important. And it's also important to keep in mind during the hackathon what your most finite resource is, time. The equation that you should be thinking about in your head throughout the hackathon is how you can use your units of time to maximize the impact on the presentation. If there's one feature that takes two hours to implement and improves your presentation by 10%, versus another feature that takes three hours to implement but improves your presentation by 30%, you should do the more impactful feature. This means that a lot of optimization, clean code type things are actually not worthwhile. Okay, so moving on with the presentation in mind, let's talk about how to pick a specific idea. Having a good idea is very important during a hackathon. But what makes an idea great? A great Web3 hackathon idea has a few important characteristics. The first is that it solves a current problem in the Web3 ecosystem, AKA it has impact. The second is that it uses a new emerging technology or it uses existing technology in a unique way. The third criteria for a great idea is something that you can build a good demo of quickly. Web3 is like a rapidly expanding universe that is constantly gaining the ability to take on more and more real world functions. The best ideas are the unsolved problems on the edge of that expanding universe. For example, a few years ago, DAOs were at the edge of this expanding universe. Now DAOs exist, but the voting and incentive systems to govern DAOs are where the open problems lie. Think about the things that just became popular over the last year, and then think about the problems that those things are having. There is a good chance that there's not a market proven solution to these problems. And if that's the case, then the judges will see the potential impact that your project can have on the ecosystem. Now combine the idea of solving a problem with doing it with a new technology. Good places to look for interesting technologies to use are the actual sponsors of the hackathon, but you can also look at what the newest hot thing is in crypto. For example, at the time of posting this video, I would say that the hot new thing is zero knowledge proofs in smart contracts. In the past, this might have been something like programmatic NFTs. A great place to stay up to date on these new exciting technologies that have a wide open design space is Vitalik Buterin's blog. Or you can subscribe to this channel because I talk a lot about them here. Now that you have a tentative idea, you need to ask yourself, what is the demo that I will build for this hackathon? This part is extremely important and you should spend a lot of time scoping out all the work that you need to do 
for the project. And I really mean thinking about the entire technical architecture of your project. Do not code until you have an idea of every single function that you'll use and how everything will fit together. If you do this entire process in the front end, you'll be able to switch your idea if it looks like it's going to take too much work. Also, it's just a good practice in general and will make the coding a lot easier and faster. Your ability to think abstractly will be best at the beginning of the hackathon when you're not tired, which is why it's the best time to finalize your system level architecture. Speaking specifically about coding, the best ideas are ones that can be built in a modular way. Things always take a lot longer than expected, so you should have a really, really easy core implementation that you can demo on. Then you can build modular components that you can add to make the project stronger and more competitive if you have time. So once you finish the actual scoping, somebody on your team should start working on the presentation. I am completely serious. If you have three people on your team, at least one of them should spend at least half their time fully on the presentation, if not all of it. Because you've done a good job scoping out your project, you should be able to create the presentation before you actually finish any of your coding. Towards the end of the hackathon, you can tweak that presentation with the specifics of your tech stack add in a actual demo of your code and include all the features that you were able to complete. So there are some specific things you need to know about making the actual presentation. It is important to demo your code and show off what you built, but it is equally important to create a story about what problem you are solving and the potential impact that your project could have if you took it further. Don't limit yourself to talking specifically about the features that you were able to complete during the hackathon. Of course, you should always be completely transparent about what you built and what you didn't, but your hackathon code serves as a proof of concept for a bigger idea, and this is the idea that you're presenting. Your hackathon code is proving that this big grand idea is possible. If I miss anything or you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, good luck with your hackathon, and I'll see you in the next video.